Seamless. Ringing in the ears from the Seamless. madness. Man, at what point does two grown men making songs at each other turn into less of an art form and more of just dudes being total bitches, eh? Just kiss, eh? <laughs> at this point. I don't think there's any winners in this beef. It seems to be all the internet's talking about right now. It's all that what our internet is talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we follow Instagram channels with questionable handles. So yeah, definitely. That we can't per se. So what does that say? It's funny because Drake clearly has Grand Wizard and Academics on the payroll there. A hundred percent. Jock and heavy. It seems like at the moment the thing is Drake seems to be representative of like the Zoomers, like the new generation. And then Kendrick somehow is representative of more old head dudes, even though they came out at the same time. Hmm. Like I remember listening to Section 80 and um, So Far Gone. The same, I'm pretty sure it was like the same year. So they're both generationally the same the same artists. Yeah. I suppose it's just very different, uh, different artists. Yeah. I mean, Kendrick's just- de- Well, they, they propose to be anyway. Yeah, I think I think it's two sides of the same coin, brother. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel. But it's funny because I was talking to uh, our dear associate, Young Tony. Oh, yeah. And he was hard on the Kendrick. Was he? He's like, it's all Kendrick. Kendrick's winning. And I was like, dude, from where I'm sitting, it looks very much like Drake is winning this. Yeah. Just on the quality of songs alone. Mate, and the production quality of the videos. Yeah, true. S- standout. <laughs> I think for me, it's just like, you guys make songs. So whoever makes the better song. That's right. That's what it's got to be. Otherwise, just tweet. Like, what am I going to play in the car? I'm not going to be in the car listening to, oh, did you hear what he said about that? Yeah, the slam, I'm like, po- which the one, slam poetry. <laughs> which one bangs harder? <laughs> yeah. And it's Drake, boy. <laughs> yeah. He even jams three different beats into that I know. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that was three songs in one. He really fucking went all in. It's like eight minutes. Of burns. But everyone's always about the artistry of like the artistry of hip hop and like diss tracks and coming for each other and subliminals and this sort of stuff. At the end of the day, Drake called him short. He said that Drake was like a bad father. Mm -hmm. And then Drake's like, you beat your wife. And now he's like, you're a pedophile. It's escalating to a point where it's not going to do good for either of them. (laughs) There needs to be a ceasefire. Could, can Drake lose though? You know, if, if he is, doesn't respond to this, so the one that came out today. You know he will respond. He will. But the one that came out today was heavy on him and his whole squad being pedophiles. Yeah. As signified is, by the artwork. There is no substantiated proof to any of those claims. But there's no substantiated proof that he beat his wife either. I, th- I think there probably is, like, based on what she- I haven't gone. Are you just a Drake full... shill, bro? Is that what's no, going no, on? No, I'm just saying. Are like, you a Drake stan? It, he does. He's come back with a whole bunch of stuff that- doesn't at all seem like uh, legitimate. It's like me saying, well, hey, the- man, your shoes are kind of dirty today. I'm like, yeah, well, you fuck kids. <laughs> yeah, but there is, there's always been like groomer things. So in the like new Like Millie Bobby Brown and shit. Yeah, thing. yeah. So there's been, there's been groomer allegations mm. going did, back. Does Drake need to groom children? It's not about what people need to and do. And look, look at his- I don't uh, think anyone has a burning need to fucking <laughs> Look at his lineup. Children. They don't really scream child to you, do they? They scream huge assed porn star women, for sure. <laughs> Man, not everyone eats the same fucking items from the smorgasbord every time they go. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so what you're saying is if a pussy was the um, buffet at the Crown Casino, he'd be getting a little bit of prawn, a little bit of pasta. Yeah, some steak. Some steak. And it seems like Drake might like the veal or the lamb, perhaps, <laughs> which is questionable. <laughs> <laughs> which is the, the young one. <laughs> is it veal? But yeah, it's like, no, nah, veal's old and mm. like, veal's, veal's like proper victim. Veal's I'm pretty always- sure with veal, they like swear at it and call it names and beat it in the dark and like, don't let it see light. It's seen, it's such an an insane thing to do to a meat and then be like, mm, this is delicious. That's how I like my meat though. <laughs> Beaten. <laughs> <laughs> Tenderized. <laughs> yeah, I'm not into it, eh? I yeah. see more and more like uh, things of cows on the internet and I like, like them more and more and I want to eat them less and less. You know what it is, man, Re- in regards to the beef. Back when it was Tupac and Biggie or... You know, Snoop Dogg, East Coast versus West Coast. There was a real threat of violence that underpinned all of that. 
With this, I don't see either team swinging, especially not the two at the top. Their, their crews might have a little bit of a uh, fisticuffs at some point if, if worlds have emerged, but there's no real violent threat here. Yeah, rap beef has been way more real in recent times than it ever has been before. Like everyone talks about the Biggie and Tupac thing. It's like, yep, gotcha. That happened. That was a thing that happened in the 90s. But then all this Chicago rap stuff, basically all of Florida, they've all been fully killing each other. Yeah, but they're not- They're, they're not, not at their top. At that top. Like there's always going to be like- Yeah, Lil Durk is. Lil Durk is like one of the biggest artists of our generation as mm. far as like streams go and plays and money in general. And he- Apparently, is like the Green Reaper. Mm. He has got some bodies. Mm. So well, I couldn't name a track, or I've never heard a diss track of his, or I wouldn't be able to pick him out of a lineup. All of their songs are diss tracks. Like they don't make songs that are diss tracks. <laughs> okay. They got this thing where they say that they're smoking on their ops, so like a kid will die, mm -hmm. like a nineteen-year-old child will fucking die in the streets, and then they'll all get on Instagram Live and smoke a massive joint, and they'll be like smoking on Tuka. Right. It's disrespectful right heavily disrespectful and then they're all about sliding for their ops so you got to like if someone dies like if josh died people in the comments here would be like you're gonna slide for josh right like if the junkies next door take me out mm. are you gonna slide for scourge that's the question i'll do nothing for scourge that's you'll just sit here and speak to a fucking you would cry i'll smoke on scourge. you would cry i'll smoke a big one on you scourge. would not smoke <laughs> you would not be smoking scourge i'd smoke three to four of scourge you would cry. You would be so <laughs> devastated. You wouldn't be able to work. You'd be seen as psych. You'd be at my funeral playing. It'd be that Boys to Men song. <laughs> How do I say goodbye? <laughs> You'd be singing it. You'd be getting the boys together. Dude, boys to Men five are sick, harmony. though. Boys to Men are sick. They are sick. I wonder if they had beef back in the day. Yeah, they were man. probably gangster as hell. Yeah. Oh, Bone Thugs and Harmony were a gangster. Mm. Crazy Bone. And whatever the other guy's name was. Fuck, you really are the black music correspondent in the Club Good podcast. You know I all listen of the, to a lot of music, bro. You know all of the ins and outs of the um the I don't quo. see artist color. Oh right. I hear it though. Yeah. I'd be like, that's a black guy. <laughs> 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 nah, I listen to a lot of music and I consume a lot of internet, so I know what's True. up. I listen to a fair bit. I, listen, I watch a fair bit of Trapalor Ross. Mm -hmm. He's like a dude that looks like, um, he looks like, what's his name? Um, Harry Potter. And he's English and he speaks, he breaks down all the things and he's got people that want him dead. Really? Yeah. Maybe he's be Grand Wizard Chat. He could be the Grand Wizard. It, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Grand Wizard looks somewhat like him. Okay. I was thinking the other day, you know who might, might be Grand Wizard? You. Menzies. <laughs> ben Menzies might be Grand Wizard. He was big on the internet. And then fell off. Oh, he's, then he disappeared somewhat. Yeah. What was his, um, what was his internet name? Uh, I don't know why I can't remember. Could be Menzies. It's been out of the zeitgeist for a while. I was very jealous of Ben Menzies, though, because um, he got a DM from John Mayer. Yep. And you would slide for John Mayer. You'd slide, you'd, you'd slide, slide John heavy. Mayer in. Slide heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't fucking get around John Mayer, dude. Never have been able to. That's fine. The it's crooning white man with a guitar. God, he is. You know what the re real reason is? I saw him once when I was in LA. Yeah? Yeah, and um, he didn't do anything bad to me, but I saw him, and I think it was just a bitter amount of jealousy. Yeah. I think I got somewhat green. Mm -hmm. and um, Tainted ever since. Yeah. I actually can't for the life of me remember what he did. I just remember there being like a bunch of girls we were talking to, and then later they were eating burgers with John Mayer, and I was like- Cunt. I've lost this round. <laughs> you win this battle, John. <laughs> you see me practicing slide guitar. <laughs> what else have you been up to this week, Scott? 
Man, I mean, I'd, I'd been, I was living in the stress. Um, I actually had hit the point on Monday where I was like, if I don't have work by Friday, then the OnlyFans is fucking starting, you know? Yeah. Um, it wasn't going to be of me. It was just going to be nudes of ex-girlfriends. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, there's no laws again. I'm sure, <laughs> sure there's no laws against it. <laughs> no, it was um, because, yeah, when, the, when the, the faucet stops, man can't drink. So I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I spoke to the bank and I spoke to I reached out to a ton of clients. It was pretty funny. This will probably fuck with my abilities to get um income, but I was looking through all the other major studios, like the creative studios and design studios, and I'd put myself out there being like, I'll freelance if you need because a lot of these studios they do like creative direction and then they get other artists, designers in to to do A, B, and C. So I kind of, and I dance in those arenas, you know, like, so they would be competing with me for the art gallery, things like that. And um, the work is not good. I was looking through it and I was like, so I made sure I, I wasn't like definitively hitting people up being like, I'm available, I'd really like to work for you. I was like, <laughs> just sliding into the DMs of studios being like, Yo, hey, if you need me. WWYD. Yeah, if you need me, I'll do it. <laughs> 2 a.m. on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely like, I'm a, neg I'm a negative person because <laughs> I look at things and I'm like, dude. Plus, I, as you know, like I, marketing and advertising, there's good marketing and there's good advertising, but for the ma major part, if you're competing for those things, you're doing adverts that no one wants to see. Mm. You know, like as I said, I was watching X-Files on SBS, so I'm getting hit with ads. And I'm like, it's offensive how bad these are. Yeah. And then the even worse ones are where it's clearly like millennials that are making the adverts going, oh, look how like sort of quirky we are. It's like, you're the worst generation. Like <laughs> we are the worst generation. Our sense of humor sucked. But yeah, it's that, so that was my week. But I managed to pull a bunch in. It turns out if you just tell people that you're available. Um, they, you can get work. They like you. Yeah. Oh, holy shit. So rather than just... My theory was always, you know, sit patiently by the banks of the river and the bodies of your enemies will float float by. Yeah, yeah. Um, it turns out that you gotta get hunting. Yeah, she got a fish. Yeah. Where which which medium did you have the most success? Uh just direct. I was just reaching out direct. Yeah, so I I just basically hit up a bunch of I saw you pop colleagues. up on LinkedIn heaps. Oh dude. Did anything come through that? No, Find just the, the just time. the diminishment of my self worth. Okay, cool. Um, so hey guys, it turns out, man, I I because I don't you know I don't dabble in LinkedIn really. Yeah, and I put on there because you don't want to diminish your brand. Yes, because I do a couple of hundred grand you worth of work. Don't want to be seen panhandling. Exactly, but the interesting thing was I did speak to a number of agencies, people that I know. Um, I won't say who they are, but. Pretty major agencies around Australia because I'd gone and I've done fucking keynote speeches and I'm I'm in the industry, I'm in the uh, you know I'm in the in the upper echelon of that. So I've got a lot of colleagues and people that are doing things and we stay in touch somewhat. And I'd hit a couple of them up and said, "Hey, pickings are a little slim. I'll freelance for you guys if you're down." And three separate ones, which I look to as being, they're, good, they're actually good agencies, one in Sydney, um, one in Melbourne, and one in the States. And all three of them said that if they don't get decent amount of work in, in the next month, they're going under. Which makes me think that there is a very, it's a very scary time because you need to think most agencies are flexing like we're killing it, we're great. We're just creative beings. Look at our, look at our clients' ROI after we did this like fucking hardcore leftist campaign about, you know, um, the LGBT community and toothpaste. Like that's the sort of thing, and they're trying to really put themselves out there as being like you're in safe hands with us. I think everyone is panicking. Mm -hmm. So there was a period on sort of Wednesday where I was like, is this whole thing about to fall over? What do you think is driving the downturn? Surely not AI. It's definitely not AI. No. AI is an excuse. Yeah. 
because AI is not taking anyone's jobs, not yet, mm. not not design and creative wise. If anything, it's just letting dickheads use it to be like, oh, look at, to get on all the websites and be like, this is the first completely AI driven ad campaign and stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, congratulations. What it is, is in Australia especially, is the cost of living crisis has hit everyone. So small business and medium sized business, so startups that aren't multinational are really feeling the pain. Tightening They're up tightening their belts. Yeah. And I spoke to a couple of people in the States that I've worked with pretty closely when I was doing the NFT stuff and dudes that have been at Google and stuff. He was basically saying that the, the agency models become antiquated because if someone hits me up and says, I need a brand identity done or something like that, which is what I tend to do, I'll be like, cool, discuss the scope, discuss the ideas, get an idea where their head's at, and then I'll disappear for three weeks. And then I'll come back with the project and they'll go, oh, we really like this concept. And then I'll go away for another two weeks. It's normally about a six week process, which is relatively quick. These tech companies and like everyone's technically a tech company now, all these startups anyway, they can't work that slowly because they might be dead in six weeks. So they're doing like team calls. I was on a couple of these team calls this week, sitting in and like giving my, I was doing a little bit of consultancy and they are like, all right, cool, do this, do this, do this. And the guy that is the designer, is junior designer, is just sitting there designing it as it's happening because it's all pitch documents and, you know, like it's not necessarily final, final market stuff. But the other thing is that the marketing industry is changing in a huge, huge way because you've got to think the, one of the biggest companies in the world or at least one of the ones that's got the most eyes on it would be Tesla, right? Tesla spend nothing on advertising. Their, their advertising budget is, is zero. Their marketing budget will be big, but their advertising budget, they don't do campaigns, full stop. They do marketing in the sense that they do their, they do their visuals for their website and stuff like that. But all of their stuff is through word of mouth and through scarcity. And then you saw the Super Bowl, which is famous for having adverts. And then one of their main adverts or the most talked about advert that was on during the Super Bowl was Kanye West on his phone. Did you see it? Just a selfie video on his phone. The biggest concert that everyone's talking about in Australia, at least, was the Fred again concert. There wasn't a flyer for it. There wasn't a poster for it. There wasn't anything. It was him doing direct. So marketing is changing and, and advertising is changing, especially because I think advertising is so completely, it, we reached peak advertising years, years ago because you're just picking up your phone and you're just being hit with constant bullshit all the time. And they're realizing that's not working anymore because people are just switched off to it completely, which leaves my industry in an interesting predicament. But that's life. Mm, mm. I did for a moment during the week because I was like, well, I'm going to have to actually get money in pretty quickly. And there was just some people around me at the time and they were like, yeah, I'll give you, you know, 10 hours worth of DJing gigs on a weekend in like stables. And I was just like, or I could kill myself. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, you do what you got to do. People have been through downturns in their industry. I'm sure people that are listening now are like still recovering from COVID. There was people that had really, my mom was telling me she had engineers that she worked with who were driving Uber. Mm, mm. <laughs> no one wants to see me driving Uber. <laughs> 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 no, I'll leave that one for the Patreon. You're too sensitive, eh? That's absolutely fine. Look, mate, we can't all grow mullets and fucking drive cars around for all day. Just wait till <laughs> I can shake it and it's going to be fucking, I'm going to be on, eh? I haven't had an obnoxious haircut since the, the great Yellow Wolf experience of 20 fucking 11 or something. Yeah. Been in the corporate game. So now it's time to let my hair down. Let your hair down, let it grow. <laughs> You got a decent hairline as well. Okay. The best thing is when your hairline is receding heavily and you compensate it by going off the back and it yeah. slides. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole different type of sliding. It slides very quickly. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm quite robust in the uh, main department. Mm. Got no issues. So. How's your dad's hairline? Still hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's thinning in the front for sure, but he's still got a full head. I've had the same hairline since I was like in my early 20s. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not the best, but it's stable. It's holding. 
It's not the best, but. It's a blue chip investment. You know it'll, I mean? it'll, it'll be there for <laughs> yeah. you when you need it. <laughs> it's not going to yield much returns, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be stable. <laughs> I was thinking about that because of stress, you know, like stress this week. Stress is some bullshit. Mm. I also smoke weed for the first time in a long time. Well, how good's weed? It is really good. It's so good, man. But I used to like being, I used to like the scary weed, the terrifying weed. Yeah. Because it's like a roller coaster. Yeah. You'd be like, holy fucking shit, what's going on? Like, yep. Just in life, you're like, well, I'm nearly 42. Yeah. And then um, I'd be like, oh, that made me feel a little bit alive, you know? But this time it was like. Hey, all of these real life problems that are going on right now. Why don't you think about them in the worst light? And I was just like lying there, like going, God. <laughs> uh, it really can go both ways, eh? Yeah. I just fucking sink back into it, and let it come over me. Yeah, so do I. You have to, because yeah. ne- otherwise, what do you do? You can't fight it. Otherwise, you just panic, and then when someone offers you a joint in six years, you're like, oh, I can't smoke weed. It makes me paranoid. <laughs> it's like, maybe you should be paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Fucking true. Maybe it's showing you something that you're willing not, you're not willing to face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I fucking love it. It's been great lately. It's been great. Yeah, you were on last week. Yeah. Yeah, your boy's out here midday smoking. Midday smoking. Yeah, it's been a week, man. A week like any other. <clears throat> it is weird when you kind of face with your own. It's not mortality, but like your own kind of. Um, it's a. It's it's very existential. Where you're like, oh, maybe what I've always done isn't what I'm going to continue doing. Yeah. And then what am I if I don't do this? It's like, do I get a job? And if I get a job, I don't think that I could do a corporate job with this. Mm. You know what's fucked? And it kind of it kind of leads into something I've been thinking about for the last few days. And it's, do you ever like start to read something? Like you're trying to work out how to do something and you're just like, fuck it. Like, I don't understand this. And I realized that potentially I'm a fucking idiot. Do you ever just think to yourself that you're actually fucking stupid? Yeah, yeah. I think we're, I think we've always been working on the idea that we have a relatively good intelligence. Yeah. And then I was I've done a lot of that recently where I'm like I'm not actually very intelligent. I listen to this. Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, I speak like an absolute bogan idiot." And I'm yeah. like, "Ooh, maybe and and I'll I'll listen to topics that we've discussed and I'll go, "That wasn't approach with any sort of um intelligence that was just an off the cuff response to something yeah and then i'll hear other people talk about similar things and i'm like oh yeah well they probably prepare and they take this sort of thing seriously and i'm like oh am i just a representative of the complete average and their complete average is low (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) So yeah, I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Like I fear that I am in moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, like I realize I don't know shit about shit. I know stuff about some stuff. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you're really outlining the fact that you're a moron right now because yeah. your just whole fucking <laughs> breakdown of life was like I don't know shit about shit. I do know some <laughs> stuff about some stuff. <laughs> I I know some stuff quite in depth, but it's nothing. That, like I know cars. I know cars. Mm-hmm. Right. But I couldn't fix a car, but I know what one sounds like coming from three kilometers away just by the sound that it makes. That's important. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I know nothing of any value to anyone, but I think we've kind of got away with it, especially us, potentially due to our white privilege. But um, just the fact that we're kind of street smart and savvy and personable and we'll charismatic to, to a degree. Yeah. Yes. I think that that ability covers up a real lack of fucking like substance knowledge. <laughs> yeah. It allows you to skate for sure. To skate. Yeah. yeah. It allows you to skate. But the idea is that that's in, in some ways that's a talent, right? Like being personable, being able to fucking speak to people. Sure. Because not a lot of being people likable. Are. Hmm. That's but that hard. The idea is that that is only a small part of the um, the Venn diagram. It's a small part of the pie graph. And you're meant to have some substance underneath that 
and that is just like an interpersonal thing. Mm -hmm. But you can dance around interpersonally and just be like, oh, yeah, well, I get along with everyone and everyone kind of likes having me around. So that's got, that's of some value. And that will give me an entry level where I can exist within society. But then to excel, you need to be able to actually have some substance that you can market, market on, right? Mm -hmm. I think we're probably too hard on ourselves. That's what everyone tells me all the time anyway, when I'm telling them what a piece of shit I am. That seems like something someone would tell you just because they're worried that you're going to commit suicide, you know? So That's I don't true. pay any attention to that. That is very- It's like, don't fucking lie to me. I know I'm a fuckhead. <laughs> that, is, yeah. <laughs> that is very true. I wonder if it's going to- um, <clears throat> I mean, I try and have- I, I, I try and build some sort of substance. I definitely have knowledge in my field and I'm yeah, good yeah. at what I do, but I do think that I've always rested on talent more than I've rested on, more than I've worked hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've worked hard at things that I'm less talented at, which haven't yielded as much benefits to me. So then it's like, ah, oh, I could just- The other thing is, I think that there was a period of time where, unfortunately, I realized that being- a little bit apathetic, like this is when I was younger, like being a little bit apathetic and less excitable was cool. And there was something to trade on that. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh yeah, being, you know, being um, ignorant was cool. Yeah. You know, when we were growing up, it was well, like, that's, the, if the, someone's trying hard or something, you'd be like, try hard. Yeah. The catchphrase was he who cares least wins, you know? Yeah. And it was usually in terms of relationships, but that could be extended to pretty much anything you do. Yeah. Because if you don't care good. and you fail, who cares? But if you don't care and you win, you're a sick cunt. Yeah, definitely. I think it would be cooler to, um, like I've cared about things. I, I care about things and I pursue them. To some degree, but there is apathy should be the enemy, but it's kind of the thing that works for everyone. It's it it yields results quickly. Where you're just like, oh yeah, nothing really bothers me. I don't really subscribe to anything fully. That seemed to work in like some sort of a social standing sense. Cause I see things, yeah, I was talking to you the other day, I was like, there's nothing. There's no one on YouTube that I would consider to be yeah. anything other than completely cringy, yeah. except for maybe like a couple of podcasts I listen to, but they're like comedians, so they're kind of playing in that area. But you kind of think, oh, how can you strive to, like, how could you strive to make this a bigger thing or something like that? And the reality of it is that you can't. You can do this and see what happens. But if you tried, you like, look at um, Andrew Schultz and all that. I wouldn't be able to do what they do and look at myself in the mirror. Like that constantly, if I was like jumping over and grabbing your leg every five. Nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like using catchphrases that fucking 17 year olds use and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing. Mm. I even have trouble making the fucking thumbnails for these things. How good was seeing Akash in uh, on JRE though? I didn't watch it, but I did see. I didn't watch it either. The comments were yeah. The comments were fucking spectacular. He's an unlikable person. The whole comments was basically, I didn't watch this, but I came here for the comments and did not uh, did not disappoint. It's funny that the comments are back because he's back on YouTube. Yeah, I haven't I haven't partaken, but yeah, it's been funny. I was watching. Um, I really got into the Operation Paperclip stuff the other day. Mm -hmm. Have you you know about that? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so wild because we were never taught anything about that in school. Mm. We were just like, yeah, the the space race was this really in this this battle of ingenuity between the the Soviets and the Americans, and it was you know we all looked up to the sky and it was such a beautiful thing. It's like yeah, we also spared a bunch of Nazis and split them with the Russians, and then yep. they're the ones that got us to the moon and well, you can tell allegedly that it's not even alleged it's <laughs> no no got us to the moon bit being yeah alleged. The, the moon bit being alleged <laughs> but yeah that dueling scars do you know about the dueling yeah scars? of course oh my god that is some terrifying shit yeah and you can see robert kennedy for those that don't know operation paperclip was basically where 
when Germany lost the war, they split up the they split up Berlin into east and west, and um, that was the Berlin Wall. But they split up a bunch of the scientists because they were so far ahead and advanced because they could tr they could um, use human human beings for their trials, and they did some of the darkest shit that's ever been done to anyone ever. And instead of uh, they took them all to the Hague and the what were the trials called again? Nuremberg trials. The Nuremberg trials, and they tried them. And then instead of putting them in prison, they were like, come to NASA. Mm. And I can't remember the guy's name. It started with a W, but he was the head of NASA. Von Braun. Von Braun. Wurten, Wurten von? I can't remember his first name. Yeah. And uh, the way that you could tell that they were hardcore Nazis is that they had these dueling scars. So they used to do fencing without facial guards in the Hitler Youth. And then they would get massive cuts on their face. I actually don't think it was a Hitler Youth thing. I think that in school, uh, the Germans fencing was like a very big thing. So a lot of them would do it um, from school time. It, 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 nothing to do with the Nazi party, but it just had to happen that a lot of those guys from Germany ended up being in the uh, okay. Nazi party. Well, I know it became like a sign of yeah. respect. So rather than getting it stitched up, they'd stuff horse hair in it so it stayed open. So they'd end up with these big open scars. And you can see um, John F. Kennedy sitting with Von Braun, yeah, um, looking up at the monitors when they're going to space, and he's got these the two dudes that are flanking him. Have both got them as well, mm -hmm. and they're some of the evilest people that have ever existed. We were like, but if we didn't use them, the Russians would have exactly, and then they would have been been able to pretend that they got to the moon. Yeah, history is so dark, man. It is. It's so insanely dark. Like even the Allies bombing of Dresden, which was just completely civilian and just setting fire to hundreds of thousands of people. That interview with Bart Sabrell, though, I couldn't listen to the whole thing. Did you try and digest any of it? Who, which one was JRE that? JRE and um, like the premier moon landing denial. No, I didn't. I didn't mm. listen to it. Joe played the role of the steel man where he was like i hate the steel man term oh, it's, so it's okay. become such a thing it's like steel man that for me yeah it's like shut the fuck up yeah how about we have a round table and fucking what happened to brainstorm yeah um but they had him on and joe was quote unquote steel manning and i was just you know when like two dudes are trying to have a conversation and like Joe's like, no, no, just wait, just, just wait. Let's let me finish. Let me finish. You know, and it's like this, they're constantly trying to get over one another. And I was like, this is hurting my brain, bro. Just let him talk, let him tell his story and then fucking let it go. We don't need yeah. to have a debate. Exactly. Cause he's not very good at debating. Um, but it was interesting and I see a lot of validity in the point. So in the points of the, the hope they didn't get to the moon. Like one of the biggest things was this, I didn't know this until I listened to the to the um, conversation, but as you exit Earth's orbit, there's this big band of heavy radiation that surrounds the entire Earth. And to get to the moon, you have to go through that layer of radiation. And we don't have the technology now to be able to go through it. How do we go through it then? To go to Mars and whatnot? Exactly. No, no, manned. So no manned thing has gone to Mars. You can't put people through it. Did that band, did the uh, Red Bull guy jump through that band? No, he went to the edge of space. Okay. Yeah. He didn't quite go into orbit, but it's past like orbit where the International Space Station is and shit, past that. It's like just before halfway to the moon or something. But yeah, we don't have the, the technology now based on what some other people have said. It was just like, there was another bit of exploration going on and they were talking about that particular band of radiation and you know the way that they deciphered the conversation the guy was like oh yeah you know to be able to get people out there we have to navigate through this band we haven't quite got there yet so now they're like well if you can't do it now how did we do it in 1960 fucking how did the indian bros do it the other week the indian bros the indian bros were on the moon yeah i don't know if i believe that <laughs> I think you kind of have to believe it at this point. I, d I still don't think anyone's been to the moon properly. What, stood on it? Yeah. Oh, the Indians didn't stand on it, did they? I think they were just up there looking out the window. Yeah. 
I think so. And then again, how close did they get, you know? Yeah, the, the funny thing is if you listen to Buzz Aldrin talk about it, because yeah. he lost his mind, and he was like, there was fucking aliens on the moon looking at us. Did you see Buzz Aldrin punch a motherfucker? No. Nah. Yeah, someone came up to him outside of like a thing he was doing a speech at and like accused him of faking the moon landing, and Buzz punches him in the face. <laughs> really? Like an old ass Buzz just pops him. It's a good shot. It is very weird that he's out there saying like crazy, crazy yeah. shit, but he is also a very old man. Yeah. But he made, this dude made a lot of very fucking intriguing points. Well, the idea was that it was um, Kubrick, right? What, doing the filming? Yep. Oh, right. It wouldn't surprise me. And apparently there was a movie and he makes reference to it. Well, they, the, the American government slash the CIA made fakes of certain parts. Yeah, which they've everyone, admitted to with it, the, the, um, the flag. I didn't hear the bit about the flag. There's no it was wind more, on the moon. There was so. a scene where they were allegedly halfway to the moon that they filmed, but you can see certain things that clearly make it known that it was filmed in a in a studio. And the guy's point was, if you'd actually gotten there, why would you fake it? Because you're opening yourself up to people saying that you faked the whole thing. It seems disingenuous. Um, and Joe's point was like, well. You don't know what was going to happen with the camera equipment while you're up there. Like you didn't know whether VHS is going to be able to come back or whatever. You know, mm. you go through a X-ray machine at the airport and your film's all fucked. They don't know what's going to happen, but they wanted to be able to show that they got there. It starts to get kind of a little bit sketchy. <laughs> have you ever found yourself in a position where there is something extremely heavy to pick up and you do not have the physical attributes to be able to manage it? I have. I know Scott has. And if you find yourself in a similar predicament, you should reach out to Jackson Moore at Perth Fork Trucks. These boys have been servicing the Perth Fork Trucking industry for over a decade? Maybe more. I don't know. It's been a long time. We don't have that information. They are experts, though. You can guarantee that. Go to perthforktrucks.com.au. The link is going to be down in the description below. Or reach out to Jackson Moore. We have a new sponsor. Uh, Le Bon Cookies. Did I swear? You can probably swear in the ad read. <laughs> if you like New York style cookies, which are crispy on the outside and half-baked dough on the inside, then get around Le Bon Cookies, who are a new podcast sponsor. They've got stores in Cottesloe and Frio. For the guys, I, I'm so terrible at these. This is fucking insane. <laughs> if you're looking for a good gift to buy for your girlfriend or wife, I think they love cookies. They do love cookies. If you're an unthoughtful boyfriend and you've forgotten to get your girlfriend a gift, Jesus f <laughs> Girls like cookies and murdered TV shows. And those things go together perfectly. So if you're looking for a gift, buy them some Le Bon cookies. You can get them delivered to your house, even if you don't live in WA, or you can go in store and grab them. The packaging's great, the branding's great, the cookies are great. It's all good. All of this is good. <laughs> Every part of what they do is good. <laughs> I recently quit nicotine and I am now going to just gouge myself on New York style cookies. <laughs> Visit them at La Bomb Cookies on Instagram. That's L-A-B-O-M-B -B cookies. La Bomb Cookies are good. I love it. Uh, I think I got enough. Do you have a fat pig girlfriend? <laughs> Well, did you see that AI, they did the, um, I was watching Putin uh, talking with an AI specialist and it, he had his AI analyze two moon landings. Mm -hmm. And one was like, oh, the, the American moon landing and the other one was like, I think the Indians going up there or something. And, it, and, and AI analyzed and it was like, this one's fake. The American one. Yeah, right. But, I mean, it's all just propaganda. At this point, they would just be like, I don't think anyone would even care because I think people are so apathetic. Like we've reached that peak of a that point of apathy where they'd be like, yeah, you know, we've, they probably did 9-11. They, I don't think they did it, but there was some sketchiness with 9-11. There was certainly some sketchiness with the Pentagon. Yes, definitely. Like the Pentagon thing, how there's hundreds of cameras at the Pentagon. Yeah. Obviously it's like the, the head of operations for the CIA, right? They definitely have CCTV. They never released any of it. There's one piece of footage, mm -hmm. and I think it's six frames. 
Yeah, boom, boom, boom. And in that six frames, you're like... Maybe it was a plane? Yeah. That was the best YouTube video of all time. They took it down. Yeah. Do you remember the one that... and And it said... And it put the um, the golf the golf green <laughs> the on the front. Yeah. They're like, yeah, why is the grass still completely fine? <laughs> they um they were talking about Alex Jones predicting nine eleven too. That's weird. That is weird. He's got some wild predictions. He literally t- said back in the day, nineties, that they would fly a plane into the twin towers and they would blame a guy called Osama. Oh, no. Surely not. It's fucking recorded. All right, we got to pause. We need to find this. Let's see, because I don't know if this is yet. They played it on that Bart Sibrel thing. Find it for me. All right. What's with this? Warm, warm, warm. Are we getting here with a fucking... I don't hear it. Havana fever? You haven't got the dubstep? No. Maybe we're getting too close to the truth and they're fucking hitting (laughs) us with some (laughs) weapons. Alex Jones predicted 9-11 in detail and on camera months before it happened. How did he do that and why did the government decide to destroy him after he did? Do we have a video? Yes. And the United States is a shining jewel the globalists want to bring down and they will use terrorism as the pretext to get it done. We know the government's planning terrorism. We know Oklahoma City and World Trade Center was terrorism. We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners. Or if you let some terrorist group do it, like the World Trade Center, we know who to blame. If any terrorism comes, it's from this government. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden, who was a known CIA asset in the 80s, running the Mujahideen War, and whose family builds all the military bases over in Saudi Arabia right now, he's the boogeyman they need in this Orwellian phony system. Wow. When was that? Um, July. July 25th, 2001. Yeah, it was, Holy yeah. shit. Yes, that's a whole thing that you can look into. I suppose Alex Jones is one of those things where he's just said so much wild shit that you can just be, <laughs> he is fully entertaining, but he said so much wild shit. Yeah, you got to kind of take it The thing it is, though, if he, said, like, he said that they're going to blow up an airliner and they're going to use Bin Laden to do it, that's, that's not a horoscope. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's not like, oh, that, this is what he meant. That's not like a Kendrick diss track mm. where you have to read between the lines and there's some <laughs> triple entendre. <laughs> Came out and literally said it. That is wild. Because the one thing that y- you just obviously he gets tarnished with is the um, yeah, the shooting. Yeah, the um, Sandy, Sandy Hook. Hook, which obviously probably chill on that one. <laughs> yeah, fully fucking chill on that. But yeah, I'm not like a, I'm not a fan. I'm I'm not I'm not like a, an Alex Jones. He's a. He's hilarious to watch, but he's too he's too hard to watch him. Oh, 100 percent Yeah, I've never watched anything that he's done, but it was just an interesting, I suppose, story coming out of that thing about the moon landing. So what well, happens- actually it was Tucker Carlson talking about him, actually, not the moon landing one. Yeah. What happens then in reality this week if then again, what's confirmation these days? I was going to say, if there was confirmation that the CIA killed Kennedy, there was confirmation that um, 9-11 was a false flag attack, and there was confirmation that COVID was, or say forget COVID, because COVID was too recent, but 9-11 and Kennedy and the moon landing. Nothing. People would, I think people would just sons of bitches. Yeah, well, obviously. Bring back Trump. What this would never do? have happened in Trump's watch. Well, they were meant to release all of the information about JFK last year because and everyone that's involved it. is dead and it's yeah. 50 years. Yeah. Um, and they're like, nah. Yeah. Because the whole theory is, well, the whole thing that everyone's saying is that the three-letter agencies run America. Yep. And that's why when Trump was in there, he was trying to get trying to disband the FBI and stuff and like that. Tr- Tucker talking about uh, Watergate. And how it was just basically an American CIA operation to get rid of him, the most voted for president in US history. Yeah, I didn't know that about um, did I. Nixon. I thought it was just a savvy reporter going undercover. Yeah, it's always weird because they make like dramatized shows about this stuff, mm. and you're like, oh, deep look throat. how quirky and funny it is. <laughs> yeah, deep throat. But yeah, it's crazy, man. Like, I think. Was it deep throat? <laughs> yeah, deep throat was the. Was. Yeah, but the seems source. Like a- Deep Throat was the source for well, Watergate. Deep Throat. It's kind of gay. Yeah, <laughs> and then they brought, then then the porno came out after. Right. That. Okay. Um, 
So we have Watergate to thank for gagging on dick. Yeah, that was where deep throating came from. Sweet. Prior to that, they'd be almost just going shallow. Eh? Some modern history. Just some shallow blowjobs going just, around. Just half shaft. Brought a whole new, brought us into a whole new world. But yeah, it's, it is pretty crazy, man. I think that there's stuff like that. Did you know there's a CIA base in the center of Australia? No, I didn't. Dude, check this out. Not at the satellites. It's in, um, is it Northern? It's, it's like the dead center of Australia. These YouTubers went there the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to send you a link on here. We'll okay. Cut some stuff together. Um, CIA base center Australia. It's called Pine Gap. Okay. Look up Pine Gap. Pine, Pine Gap is a joint United States Australian satellite intelligence gathering and signals intelligence surveillance base and Australian Earth Station, appro approximately 18 kilometers off the southwest town of Alice Springs. This joint, operated by Australia and the US since 1988, has been officially called the Joint Defense Facility Pine Gap, JDFPG. It plays a crucial role in supporting the intelligence activities and military operations of US around the world. The base's role has caused much controversy in Australia, being uh, leading to various pro projects, protests. Sorry, oh, can you see the satellite images of it? Yeah, that shit looks like a fucking space station. <laughs> it's our Area Fifty One, and it's American, American land, according to producer Josh. Um, but young, uh, what's the guy's name? F Friendly Geordies. Yeah. And a couple of other YouTubers went there the other week. Oh, and they right. Got, they got detained. <laughs> they like flew to Alice Springs and tried to drive out there. That would be sick. I would imagine that that has something to do with being a nuclear base of operations. Yeah. Um, because Australia wouldn't be affected by an attack on the US in that nuclear fallout immediately. Mm. So they would potentially be able to run operations mm. from there. Mm. But that's pretty crazy. You think about everything that was set up in the 60s and the 50, like 50s, 60s, post-World War II, Cold War, and they would have just been like, as long as we can keep everyone in the dark about this, we can pretty much do what, we, what they want. Yeah. And then the internet happens and then, you know, drones happen, like, like consumer drones, um, the dark web, all this stuff, and people are just talking about- the, the ability to keep things secret would just be so, so fucking hard. hard now. Unless it's like underground or underwater, not going to happen. Mm. <laughs> well, the best thing about the, the UAP stuff is that they reckon it's all underwater. underwater. Mm. That's the coolest. I like. That is the coolest shit. Yeah. Man, speaking of terrifying water situations, I watched The Beach the other night again. Oh, yeah, with Leo. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'll backtrack. I went and watched Civil War. That new oh, movie, yeah. the A24 yeah. one. It's phenomenal. Yeah, right. It is really, really good. So what they did really well about it is they made it from the from the point of view of like war journalists. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what year it is. Well, they're just fucking sketching it. <laughs> nah. You don't know what year it is. You just know there's a civil war on. You get little bits and pieces of like who's involved. You don't know if it's Democrats or Republicans that were in charge. It's a fascist government basically. And the whole thing is it doesn't go into the idea of what side's right and what side's wrong or how they got there. It's just that it's happening and it shows the way that p different people react. So there's certain groups of people that just pretend it's not happening. There's other groups of people that are fully, there's militias and like, it's basically an uprising against the government. It's very scary. It's a very scary movie. It's very well done. Done by the same guy that did um, Ex Machina. But I listened to an interview with him about that movie and he's a director, but he's a novelist. That's, his, that's where he came from. And the first thing that he got famous for writing was The Beach. Mm. And he wrote The Beach. His name's Alex something or other. What's his name? Alex Garland. Um, and he was backpacking around Australia and Southeast Asia and he wrote this book called The Beach. And it was his sort of knock on how horrible backpacking culture was and how ridiculous it is and how it's a really shitty way of the Western world going and just ruining the rest of the world and the rest of the world reacting to it and getting worse for it. 
And then, unfortunately, that movie became the reason that a whole new backpacking generation existed. But I watched it. it was, it's a, that's a cool rewatch. It's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you went to that island, right, with us? Pee-pee? Yeah. That's no, was, I didn't go. You didn't go? Chloe was sick, remember? Well, oh, you wouldn't remember. That's a photo but... opportunity missed out on. I know. Um, Thankfully, I was happy about it. <laughs> no, it was sick. We so I just cruised around smoking darts. True. I smoked darts on the beach with a bunch of monkeys. Uh, true. Um, but yeah, the shark attack scene in that is yeah. hardcore. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. That's a sick film though. I got really, I was, I was right into it. <laughs> yeah. He's so unlike, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio is so unlikable in that, which yeah, is the intent. Yeah, the intent yeah. is that he is like representative of a very unlikable type of person. Mm. Um, but we all miss that. We just watched it and we're like. Do you know, boy, awesome Leo's got song. a fucking 19 year old girlfriend right now. Again, that's not a surprising thing, is it? Not he'd really. Been, at least he's consistent. You know, Anthony Kiedis, Red Hot Chili Peppers, got a twenty-year-old girlfriend too, which is a little bit weird. I think he's like sixty-one. Oh, yeah, that's sketchy. He's got some weird. skeletons in the closet, man. Oh, he yeah. actually got done for a uh, fifteen-year-old fornication. Really? Yeah. No one wants to talk about that, right? Because they want to listen to Californication. But scar tissue. Yeah, he. I'll tell you what it was. Because when I was always wondering why no one had come for him on that. Yeah. While Scott's doing that, Josh, can you tell me how long we've been going for? Because your boy needs to piss. He's had too large as are. He's didn't think it through. Yeah, he wrote a song called Catholic Girls, Catholic School Girls Rule. <laughs> he had relationships with 14-year-old girls both before and after he was aware of their age. That's weird. Um, slept with actress uh, Ion Sky when she was 16 and he was 24. Um, he was also convicted of sexual battery and indecent, indecent exposure. He was charged with statutory rape. Wow. Yeah, this is all like going back a long time ago, but it was, it was similar to that, the stuff with Seinfeld, where it was like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's just Lothario. I suppose he's never come out and been like anti government or anything. So they're <laughs> like, yeah, it's fine. What's the deal with young girls? <laughs> that was my favorite reel I've ever made. <laughs> I use the soundboard for that. Yeah. It's fucking genius. What's the deal with 17 year old? <laughs> 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 fucking my Jerry, eh? All right. One last topic and we'll fucking move on to the Patreon. Indeed. What we got? Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, we can circle it all the way back to the Drake and Kendrick thing. Okay. You have Drake. You have Drake winning. That's I have Drake up right now, yeah. Damaging to both of them. I don't think damaging to Drake. I think it's been damaging to Kendrick. I don't really see much. Yeah, because Kendrick's more of a legacy guy and Drake is more of a public figure. Yes, yeah. So, but it does sound like it appears, if you listen to the internet powers that be, that Drake's team has been feeding Kendrick misinformation. Do you think if Kendrick retired from making music today... He has a legacy? Yeah. Could kid Mad City. Yeah. I think he does. I think it's our generation. Can you have a ilmatic. legacy with one album? Yeah. I mean, if Nas died after Illmatic, he would have been the greatest rapper that ever lived. Do you think Illmatic's better than Mad City? Yes. But Mad City is brilliant. I think it's great. Yeah. I don't think it's legacy good. It's better than any other rap album that's come out since. It I would say... Legacy wise, as far as like crazy, brilliant, world changing rap albums happened, you'd have Nazilmatic, Good Kid Mad City, College Dropout. College Dropout. But it's probably not. That's just more so what. My Beautiful that. Dark Twisted Fantasy, I think. I think that's okay. my favorite Kanye album. But college, but college Dropout is probably the one I listen to the most. Hmm. Get Rich or Die Trying, Martha, Marshall Mathers LP. But I don't feel like that they stand up like Illmatic does. Like you can still, yeah, 36 Chambers probably. Mm. But I don't know, like Drake doesn't have one. Take Care was very good. But it's not like, I don't think anyone will ever listen to Kendrick again and not be like, I wish I could hear Good Kid Mad City for Drake the has like 10 top, like two, number two albums. Yeah, but they're not <laughs> good. They're, they're, he's just servicing his celebrity by riding the waves of the times, which he's very good at. And he has mm. a big team that does mm. that with him. So like 
I think Drake is bolstering his celebrity by continuously making music. Mm -hmm. Whereas, as far as an art form goes and timeless classics, I mm -hmm. really do think. I mean, timeless classics as well. You'd have you probably have to say two thousand one. Hotline or the Bling. Chronic. <laughs> Undeniable. The Chronicle 2001. <laughs> yeah, they were slappers. Which one? I would say The Chronic. Yeah. I think 2001 was more, affected us all more. Yes. Because of the age we were at. Yeah. But The Chronic, if you go back and listen to it, you Had like, the bangers. Yeah, hard. NWA. <laughs> oh, dude. Straight out of Compton. I once got laid because I could uh, sing the lyrics to Fuck the Police start to finish without missing a beat. Did I say the N-word? Maybe. <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> the best line time. of that, and the funniest thing is that people talk about like real hip-hop now. Like I was having this argument with Tony where he's like, Kendrick is like real hip-hop and Drake is just a fraud. You know what I mean? And I was mm -hmm. like, Ice Cube wrote the majority of NWA's material. He wrote the majority of their verses. Ice Ice Cube Ice T Ice Cube Ice T Ice Cube Ice Cube Ice Cube was a uh, architecture student. He was not a gangster at all. Mm. So he was writing this whole like street commentary thing from the the view of what was going on at the time, but it, he wasn't a part of it. So it's never been real. Yeah. It's literally never been real. So you can't, that whole argument, you can't even really get behind, I don't think. Well, there you go, guys. Two white guys commentating on a, black art. Tupac was a uh, theatre theater student. In next week's episode, <laughs> we touch on Vietnamese population. <laughs> Stay tuned. Do they well, belong there? We don't know. <laughs> uh, All right, guys. Switch to the Patreon where we can talk about the real issues that are affecting the world. Peace. Club are good. Good. <laughs>